Video Lecture 4H, Types of Redox Reactions. In a previous lecture, we discussed redox reactions, those reactions that involve the transfer of electrons between two species. In this lecture, we will look at different types of redox reactions. We will classify them by how the atoms reshuffle or rearrange themselves between reactants and products. These reactions include combination, decomposition, single displacement, and combustion. It's important to note that the first three com combination, decomposition, and single displacement reactions can occur without electron transfer. However, for this course, we will only limit our discussion to those that do include electron transfer. The first type of reaction are combination reactions. In a combination reaction, two substances, usually simpler in structure, combine to form a new substance that's usually more complex. A good example of a combination reaction is one of our favorites. The reaction between hydrogen and oxygen in the presence of a fuse to form water. In the water formation reaction, hydrogen goes from having a zero oxidation number to having a plus one oxidation number. This means that hydrogen is oxidized. Those electrons lost by hydrogen are picked up from oxygen, causing a change from a zero oxidation number to a minus two oxidation number. This means that oxygen was reduced. The second type of reaction is the decomposition reaction. It is literally the opposite of what happens in a combination reaction. That is, a single substance that's usually complex reacts to form two or more simpler substances. And a good example, and an interesting one at that, is the decomposition of hydrogen peroxide. When hydrogen peroxide decomposes, it forms water and oxygen gas. This is an interesting type of redox reaction because an element is both oxidized and reduced. In hydrogen peroxide, oxygen has a minus one charge. Oxygen is oxidized from having the minus one charge in hydrogen peroxide and having a zero, a zero oxidation number in oxygen gas. Therefore, this is how oxygen becomes oxidized. Oxygen is also reduced because in liquid water, oxygen has a minus two oxidation number. Therefore, we can say that oxygen was also reduced. The third type of reaction that we'll discuss are single displacement reactions, especially those that involve metals. In general, a single displacement reaction, occur, displacement reaction occurs when one element is substituted for another element from a compound. Or we can say that that element was displaced by another. A good example of a single displacement reaction that involves a metal is the reaction between magnesium solid and hydrogen, hydrochloric acid. In this reaction, magnesium goes from having a zero oxidation number to having a plus two oxidation number. This means that magnesium gets oxidized. On the other hand, hydrogen goes from having a plus one oxidation state in hydrochloric acid to having a zero oxidation number in hydrogen gas. Therefore, hydrogen is reduced. We can, it turns out that we can actually predict whether these single displacement reactions will occur by, sub, by putting these into categories. Pure metals are able to displace hydrogen gas from, waters and, from water and acids under certain conditions. They can also displace other metals from aqueous solutions that contain metal ions. To predict whether these reactions will occur, we use the metal activity series. The metal activity series lists metals from the most reactive 
to the least reactive. We can divide the metal activity series into three major categories. The first category are the very reactive metals. These metals violently displace hydrogen gas from water or, or acids. This displacement is very quick and very energetic. So much heat is actually given off that it, causes the it can cause the hydrogen gas to ignite. Note that these very active metals belong to groups 1A and 2A. The second category of, of metals are moderately active ones. Some of these metals, the one shown in bright red for example, will slowly displace hydrogen for water, and the, from water, and the reaction is much less energetic. However, these metals will very quickly displace hydrogen gas from acids. However, not enough heat is generated to actually ignite the hydrogen gas. The metals in dark red will displace hydrogen from acids, but will be fairly unreactive towards water. Note that hydrogen gas is at the bottom of this metal activity, this, the metal activity series that we are showing so far. The third class of metals are those that are noble metals. This means that they do not react with either water or acid to form hydrogen gas. However, they will react with nitric acid to form NO2 gas. We call these metals the noble or coinage metals because they are not very reactive towards moisture and are excellent candidates for creating coins and jewelry. In general, when using the metal activity series, the more active metals will displace less active metals that are in solution as ions. A good example is the following, following problem. We want to identify which re redox displacement reaction will occur based on the metal activity series. For the reaction that will occur, we'll write balanced molecular and net ionic equation. Since transition metals can form a variety of different cations, we'll show we will usually what is done is that the charge of the that transition metal will be given as it is below. If we study the metal activity series and find chromium and magnesium, we'll see that magnesium is above chromium in the metal activity series. This means that magnesium can displace chromium from a solution containing chromium ions, but chromium solid will not displace magnesium since it's less reactive. Therefore, the second reaction will result in no observable change. However, our first reaction will occur. When magnesium solid is added to a solution containing chromium 3 plus ions, the magnesium will displace the chromium from, from the solution. What will, what, will, what will occur is that the chromium will fall out of solution as a solid. Note that our reaction is not balanced. The nitrates are at different numbers on each side of the equation. We can fix this by adding a 2 to chromium nitrate and a 2 to chromium to balance out the chromium atoms. We can do the same for magnesium, adding a 2 to magnesium nitrate on the product side, and th or I'm sorry, a 3, and th a 3 to the magnesium solid on the re reactant side. Now we can write a complete and net ionic equation. Magnesium solid will, will remain the same in our complete ionic equation. However, we can dissociate chromium-3 nitrate into chromium-3 plus ions and nitrate ions. The same can be done with magnesium nitrate, dissociating it into magnesium-2 plus and nitrate minus. Chromium remains the same.
we can then identify our spectator ions, which turn out to be the nitrate ions. These can be canceled out to give us our net ionic equation, which reads three magnesiums and two chromium three plus will yield three magnesium two plus and two chromium. Note that it's very easy to see the redox change. Magnesium is oxidized to magnesium two plus and chromium is reduced from chromium three plus to chromium solid. This gives us another way to interpret the metal activity series. Those metals towards the top of the series are more easily oxidized than metals towards the bottom. The metals towards the top can therefore oxidize metals towards the bottom of the metal activity series list. The last type of redox reactions are combustion reactions. Combustion reactions occur when any substance is ignited in the presence of oxygen gas. In a combustion reaction, oxygen usually undergoes reduction. A good example of a combustion reaction is the reaction that occurs when you light a butane lighter. Butane undergoes combustion to form carbon dioxide gas and 10 water molecules. In this reaction, oxygen can be seen as going from a zero oxidation number to a minus two oxidation number in both water and carbon dioxide. Therefore, we can easily see that oxygen is reduced. Carbon, on the other hand, typically undergoes combustion, typically undergoes oxidation in combustion reactions. It is a very difficult, it's a different process to assign oxidation numbers in combustion reactions. But we've done so here to, to illustrate our point. In, in the butane molecule, carbon has a minus four oxidation number, while in carbon dioxide, carbon has a plus four oxidation number. Therefore, carbon is completely oxidized in this reaction. Many times you will see combustion reactions between that occur with organic compounds that contain hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. In these cases, the combustion will occur to always form carbon dioxide and water.